Bibracta, a Gaulish more fortified city, was the capital of the Aedui and one of the most important Hilferts in Gaul. It was situated near modern Autun in Burgundy, France. The material culture of the Aedui corresponded to the late Iron Age Latin culture. In 58 BC, at the Battle of Bibracta, Julius Caesar's armies defeated the Helvetii 16 miles south of the fort. In 52 BC, Vercingetorix was proclaimed head of the Gaulish coalition at Bibracta. Also there Julius Caesar, the victor at the Battle of Elysia, completed dictating his Gallic Wars. A few decades after the Roman conquest of Gaul, Bibracta was abandoned in favor of Autun's 25 kilometers distant. Once abandoned, Bibracta remained undisturbed and unexamined until discovered by modern archaeology. Jacques Gabriel Bouliot initiated the first excavations at the site between 1867 and 1895. His nephew Joseph Deschlet, author of a famous Manuel de Geology, continued the excavations between 1897 and 1907. The modern site known as Mont Beauvry is generally identified as ancient Bibracta. The site straddles the borders of the French départements of Nièvre and saône et loire in Burgundy. The site is an archaeological park at the centre of a protected forest. It is the focus of cooperative European archaeological efforts, a training ground for young archaeologists, and a centre for interpreting Gaulish culture for a popular audience. Important international excavations have been undertaken at Mont Beauvry by teams from the universities of Sheffield, Kiel, Budapest, Vienna and Leipzig. On December 12, 2007, the site of Bibracta received the Great Site of France label. Before the Roman conquest in 52 BC the great Celtic city of Bibracta had more than 30,000 inhabitants protected by a huge stone wall of the Maris Gallicus type enclosing an area of 135 hectares. Etymology The origin of the word Bibracta is still poorly understood. The term may have come from the Celtic asterisk bibro, asterisk bibro followed by the collective suffix acti or from the Latin bifractus. The latter version, however, is thought questionable from a strategic view, since it is very difficult to protect a battlement over a long distance, a problem which a double battlement would only have exacerbated. Furthermore, the surrounding wall of the city has shrunk since dating methods made it possible to show the precedence of the outer battlements compared to the inner battlements. The stone facing of the outer surrounding wall, moreover, was certainly reused for the construction of the second wall. Therefore, it is unlikely that Bibracta had two surrounding walls at the same time. Three inscriptions dedicated to the goddess Bibracta which were found at Autun in the 17th century provide another explanation for the name but two of the inscriptions carved into the stone have disappeared and the authenticity of the third, engraved on a brass medallion, has been the object of debate. Some scholars of the era have cited other evidence to justify placing the Eduin Oppidum on the site of Autun, which was effectively the capital of the Aedui in the first century. Discovery of Bibracta Bibracta is mentioned only twice in Roman sources. The first mention of Bibracta is found in Julius Caesar's commentaries on the Gallic War in the year 58 BCE. It was mentioned again in 52 BCE, when he was questioning the intentions of his Aedui allies, who had joined the revolt and crowned Vercingetorax king of the Gauls at Bibracta. Inscriptions from the era announced that the capital of the Aedui received the name Augusto Dunum during the reign of Augustus, which gave rise to the current Autun. Starting in the 16th century, a passion for local history arose among scholars, aristocrats, and clergy, which led to the question of the location of Bibracta. One theory placed Bibracta at Autun, the Gallic city at the site of the Gallo-Roman city. Another placed it at Bone and was defended by the scholar Hux de Salens. A third located the city on the slopes of Beuvrecht or Bevrecht, today known as Mont Beuvry. This last theory was based on three major arguments. 
first, there is a connection between the names Bibracta and Buvricht. Second, medieval chronicles situated the city at Buvricht. This was reinforced by the existence of an annual fair on the first Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of May, the age of which is attested to in texts from the 13th century. Finally, the discovery of pottery, coins, and the observations of the priest of St. Legisu Buvry in 1725 supported it. Generally, the Autun hypothesis received the greatest approval at first. Moreover, Autun was renamed Bibracta after the French Revolution and remained so for some time. Only the research of Jack Gabriel Bulliet in the 19th century changed scholarly opinion in favor of Montbuvry. In 1851, Bulliet decided to communicate with the Congress of the French Society of Archaeology about an ancient chapel established to Christianize the AEDUI. He also returned to Montbuvry to take more notes. He discovered what he thought was the embankment of a Roman camp at the summit of Montbuvry next to the chapel. He documented it and considered placing Bibracta at Montbuvry instead of Autun's, contrary to the unanimous opinion of the AEDUI society. The publication of his essay on the Roman system of defense in the AEDUI country between the Sawan and the Loire, in which he revealed his convictions, was not taken seriously by the members of the Society of Archaeology. Then Emperor Napoleon III took an interest in the battles of the Gallic Wars and an officer named Stoffel, charged by the Emperor with conducting investigations of the Roman victory over the Helvetii, visited Bulliet, who shared with him in his opinions about the location of Bibracta. Stoffel was not interested, but he commissioned Xavier Garen, another member of the AEDUI Society, to make a survey of Montbevery. At the same time, the Viscount of Abovel, the owner of the land, conducted research and shared it with the Archbishop of Reims, who was a member of the AEDUI Society and a friend of Bulliet, though he did not share Bulliet's theory about the location of Bibracta. Interested by these investigations, the Archbishop shared the various findings with the Emperor who, in 1867, assigned Bulliet to do research at Montbevery and funded his work. Bulliet excavated the site from 1867 to 1905, removing all doubt about the location of Bibracta. His nephew Joseph Deschlet, whom he introduced to excavation, continued the work until 1907. Comparing Bibracta to other sites in Europe such as Stradnite in Bohemia, Manching in Germany and Velemzenstvid in Hungary, which were precursors of the cultural unification of the Celtic world and of the civilization of Opida, history of the Opidum, chronology of the population of Uvri during the excavations of the gate, five artifacts were discovered the oldest of which showed human habitation on Montbevery in the Neolithic era. Dating techniques have shown that the oppidum was not founded until the end of the 3rd century on an area of 200 hectares protected by the exterior rampart. An interior rampart was built later, for reasons unknown. Because the AEDUI had the status of friend of the Roman people, contacts with Roman merchants were probable before the conquest of Gaul by Julius Caesar. This privileged status prevented Bibracta from suffering much conflict. In 58 BCE, at Montemort, 25 kilometers south of the site, Julius Caesar's armies defeated the Helvetii, forcing them to return to Switzerland and gradually be incorporated into what would become the Roman Empire. In 52 BCE, an assembly of Gallic peoples at Bibracta gave Vercingetorix supreme command of the Gallic armies. Despite this insurrection, Caesar treated the city mercifully after his victory at Elysia. He stayed there during the winter of 5251 BCE to write his commentaries on the Gallic War. These mentioned the names of certain notables of the AEDUI aristocracy such as Dum Norix, Virgo Brett of the AEDUI, and his brother Divisicos. 
the Druid, the city's industry boomed in the decades following the war. Strabo the geographer, who wrote a generation after Caesar, identified Bibracta as an AEDUI stronghold again. After the founding of Orton 25 kilometers away c. 15 BCE, during the reign of Augustus, Bibracta was gradually abandoned by its inhabitants. However, cults continued to practice their rites in its temples and by its fountains and its aristocratic residences were maintained. Two main hypotheses have been advanced concerning this gradual abandonment of the site over several decades. The migration could have been caused by economic reasons or by a desire to integrate with the Roman model, a part of the dominant AEDUI class, already pro-Roman during the Gallic War definitely realized the strategic importance of the new city located on the principal axes of communication and wanted to conform to the Roman model of flatland cities, while a more traditional population remained for a time on the Bibracta site. It is known from 13th century texts that a festival every first Monday of May survived. In the 15th and 16th centuries, a convent of Cordeliers was established on Mont Beuvry. It was abandoned, but the festival continued. Influence and power The power of the AEDUI capital was related in the commentaries on the Gallic War, which underlined the many alliances held by the AEDUI with neighboring peoples. Julius Caesar also mentioned the wars that set the AEDUI against the Arvani and the Sequana for hegemony over a large part of Gaul. These references were not impartial, since Rome was allied with the AEDUI, our blood brothers, since at least the 2nd century BCE. Moreover, they maintained commercial links and military alliances. Rome aided the AEDUI in the 2nd century in defeating a Tarvini army and rose to their defense against the invasion of the Helvetii that precipitated the Gallic War. Gabriel de Mortiot, in his classification of ancient peoples, included the site's residents under the name of Bivrigian, a category abandoned by modern scholars, in the by Gabriel de Mortillet. In addition to this powerful alliance with Rome, the AEDUI were part of a confederation of Celtic tribes, the Ambari, the Branovices, the Belavaci, the Bituriges, the Parisii, the Seguziavi, the Senwans, whose influence thus extended across a large part of Gaul. Archaeologists estimate the population of Bivri between 5,000 and 10,000 inhabitants at its peak. Commerce in his History of Gaul, the historian Camille Julian writes these lines about the AEDUI. Bibracta, I am sure, was the source and the guarantee of their power. Around Bibracta were very good roads, uniting the three biggest basins of France, so, the Roman products traveling up the Rhone and taking after that the Saewon, the Loire or the Allia passed through AEDUI territory before joining the basins of the Loire and Seine. The AEDUI were located at a commercial crossroads between the Celtic world and Rome. Thus did they allow the diffusion of Roman products through Gaul as soon as the 2nd century BCE, allowing their allies to benefit from their commerce with Rome and definitely with Greek colonies such as Massilia. These exchanges are confirmed by the large quantities of amphoras and ceramics from Italy found in waste tanks and in the paving of houses. In addition, the AEDUI installed a system of customs that taxed the products passing through their territory to increase their wealth as attested in the texts of Julius Caesar. It was typical of dumb Norix. The man was audacious, his generosity made him popular, and he wanted political change. For years, he has had the control of the customs and all the other taxes of the AEDUI, because when he bid, no one dared bid against him. The AEDUI and the Sequana fought each other to control the Arab because the control of the river allowed taxation of all the Roman and Celtic products traveling to the north of the continent via the waterways. Politics The political system of the AEDUI was essentially reformed according to indications in the commentaries on the Gallic War. At the head of the AEDUI state sat a senate comprising one member of each AEDUI aristocratic family. 
What is today called executive power was held by the Virgo Brett, the supreme magistrate, who exercised his functions over the course of a year. He was forbidden from leaving the borders of the territory during this period, which prevented him from commanding the army outside the borders. This measure, along with that which authorized only one voice per aristocratic family in the Senate, aim to prevent any individual or their family from monopolizing the reins of power. The Virgo Brett was publicly elected by a council directed by the Druids. Among the Aedui, it seems like the Virgo Brett also exercised a judiciary role, since Caesar reports that he had the right to life and death over his fellow citizens. Finally, it is thought that the Virgo Brett was responsible for the administration of the territory. Caesar adds that the Druids were charged with this. They believe that religion does not allow them to put the material of their education in writing, while for the rest in general, for public and private administrative acts, they used the Greek alphabet. No excavation has permitted the rediscovery of such acts, the backings of which being wood covered with wax, are perishable. Furthermore, it is known that the Druids held high functions since Divitiacus came to Rome to plead the case of the Aedui during the Germanic invasion led by Ariovistus on the account of the Sequana. He also directed the Aedui cavalry during the Gallic War after the death of his brother Dumnorix. Therefore, it is thought that some Druids held high military positions. Archaeological research on Mont Beuvry from 1865 to 1895, Gabriel Bulliot identified Bibracta in 1867 and began excavations there, with the aid of funds allocated by Napoleon III. In fact, having a passion for history, the emperor set off vast campaigns of excavations to uncover sites of the Gallic War in order to write his history of Julius Caesar. The modest Hotel of the Gauls, which housed the researcher on the premises, had been constructed there since. Joseph Deschlet, the nephew of Bulliot, took up his work again from 1895 to 1907. He was killed during World War I. Thus, the excavations fell into neglect. In 1984, the excavations began again under the impetus of François Mitterrand, who proclaimed Bibracta a site of national interest in 1985. This term, invented for the occasion, would permit the site to be subsidized. The label of national interest was created afterward in order to designate exhibitions or sites which benefit from a program of diffusion and enlargement of the public by the Minister of Culture. This will always give the necessary impetus to a project of excavations of European scope. Thus, in 1989, the European Archaeological Centre of Mont Beaufry was created, which will reassemble the site, the museum, and the research centre of Gluckson Glenna. It was inaugurated in 1995. By order on March 21, 1995, the Minister of Culture, on the advice of the National Council of Archaeological Research, confirmed the oppidum of Bibracta. The excavations were actually conducted by Vincent Gitchard and put into practice by many French and foreign teams. The excavations notably concentrated on the Gallic neighborhood of Rebout, on the vast Gallo-Roman ensemble of the pasture of the convent and the Roman residence of the Horse Park. Thus, specialists, researchers, Professors and students from all over Europe mix on the site every summer in order to excavate different parts of the site. These included, among others, Austria, University of Vienna, Belgium, Université Libre de Brussels, Czech Republic, Masaryk University, France. University of Franche Comte, University of Burgundy, University of Paris 1, Pantheon Sorbonne, Pierre and Marie Curie University, Francois Rabelais University, Germany, University of Kiel, University of Leipzig, Ludwig Maximilian University of Munich, University of Mainz, Hungary, EOTVO's Larand University, Italy, University of Bologna, Poland, Jezo University, Slovenia, University of Ljubljana, 
Spain, University of Madrid and University of Zaragoza, Switzerland, University of Lausanne, United Kingdom, University of Edinburgh. Each university excavates the site in the form of triannual projects which currently depend on the comprehension of the operation of a Celtic city of the Latin period. Their research consists of several weeks of work on the terrain which is followed by a detailed study of the excavation and of the discovered objects, which are then stored at the site's research center. Archaeological prospecting on Mont Bivry The prospecting technique used by Bulliot was rudimentary. It consisted of observing the irregularities in the landscape, since the mountain was practically unchanged since the period under study. This allowed him to recreate a plan of the battlements with nearly no excavation. He used this technique to make a scale plan with the help of the army topographers, who made a series of topographical recreations of the landscape. Only the recreation of the poorer neighborhood exists. To this day, in recent years, the same technique has been used in the same poorer neighborhood with more precise tools, like theodolites and GPS. In fact, aerial and electromagnetic prospecting is made impossible by the vegetation that that reforested the mountain since the end of grazing and the excavations of Joseph Deschlet and the nature of the subsoil. One costly but faster technique, which is to be tested in 2007, is LIDAR, the use of airborne laser scanners which are unhindered by the vegetation and can recreate in minutes what usually takes weeks to do on the ground. This will be done in order to attempt to make a complete map of the city and to archive the topography of the location.